Welcome again to the Tin Dog Podcast. As promised, this is the second podcast of the week. So just that you're aware, there were two podcasts broadcast this week. The first was on the DVD release The Meddling Monk, and that was released yesterday. So if you've just downloaded this and you've missed The Meddling Monk podcast, nip back into iTunes and download it. You might find other episodes of the Tin Dog Podcast that you've missed. Similarly, there's a warning on that one, saying that the review of Torchwood 2.3 will be available tomorrow, i.e. today, if that makes sense. Or are we just time travelling? Without much ado, onwards. Oh, before I go on though, I would just like to say that if you enjoy the Tin Dog podcast and you're sitting there one day after you've been on eBay and you find a couple of quid lying around or one or two dollars just sitting there, remember you can donate to keep the Tin Dog podcast going. Um, via the donate button located on the website. That's tin-dog.co.uk. Just click the donate button and give whatever you can. Smallest amounts are fine. The donate button's been there for several months now and I've received a grand total of, um, well, nothing. But it was a nice thought. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let us begin by reviewing episode 2.3 to The Last Man. I watched it last night, and I must admit, it's possibly my favourite episode of Torchwood so far. Some of you out there may be thinking, well, that's not exactly difficult, but but it is. To me, this was the episode of Torchwood we were sold all along. Not exactly a British X-Files. The X-Files is an entity in itself, but it uses the things that the English do very, very well in their television. It was almost a descendant of Sapphire and Steel. Time was breaking through things were happening. It was a semi-ghost story. It was a little unnerving. It had logical, moral points to make. In fact, it is the grandchild of Sapphire and Steel. And if you're unfamiliar with Sapphire and Steel, I suggest you try and track them down, because the author P.G. Hammond wrote the fairies story in season one of Torchwood, and he will be writing one later on for this series, I think, based on one of the old Sapphire and Steels, where people come to life from photographs. So in a sense, it is the logical next generation. So what of the story itself? Well, you know, it's using the time rift, yes, that well-known plot device, um, to actually be part of the plot, rather than just something timey-wimey going on in the background. A Tommy from the First World War called, bizarrely, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy is the nickname um, put forward at the time by the Germans, well, and the other people around Europe, it's not important. I'm sorry, I work in a museum, I must keep my facts about the war kind of correct. There were a couple of historical inaccuracies, and I'll cover those later on, but right now it's the episode itself that we have to cover. On one level, it's definitely a ghost story. Strange things are happening in an abandoned hospital. On another level, it's giving backstory to us about Torchwood. And let's face it, we're talking about old 19... well, 1918 Torchwood. Torchwood filled with old steampunk-type accessories. Ah, lovely bits of ancient technology. My personal favourite, in fact. There is an argument uh, available on the internet for anybody who cares to look, saying that the Torchwood that we'd like to watch would be classic, old-fashioned, almost Quatermass-style how can I put this nicely? You know the, t- the way the TV series Heartbeat is set in the past? Well, you could set Torchwood in the past. And that way you've got classic old stories, but with technology from then, or pseudo-technology. Ah, it's not worth going into. It'll never happen. But I must admit, we only saw two people from the old Torchwood, and they were in it for a few moments. And boy, did they make an impact. On another level, of course, this was just another love story for Tashiko after the rather badly organised one from Series 1. As my um, comrade in arms, Gabriel Chase, put, or was it Tobias Vaughan? I think it was Tobias, on the grounds that those people don't actually exist. He did say that the seri- that episode with Toshiko and her relationship with the woman out of my family 
um, as an alien which was I think from the same race from the alien port from Sarah Jane Smith but I could be wrong but then again probably just the same bit of CGI used for a different story oh let's not go there have a drink I am aware that I'm rambling but basically all I want to say is that this was a great episode it was what I was expecting all along from Torchwood it's really beginning to find its feet and I'm very very pleased about this my gripes with the episode are tiny are things like the really suspect edit when she drops her bag on the pier and then drops it again but perhaps that's just time spillage or something equally explainable or weighable the reoccurring use of news 24 is always dubious when there's no clock in the corner whenever you watch news 24 in real life the clock's always there this kind of annoys me from time to time but that's fine another small error is that tommy incorrectly describes himself as a private officer Now this doesn't actually exist as a rank or a designation. The correct term he should have used was private soldier, or simply private. It's forgivable, and it was fairly skipped over. The thing that I have slightly more issues with was Jack's suggestion that more than 300 shell-shocked British soldiers were executed. It's not completely true. We've looked into it, and it appears that 306 of the 346 people who were executed which is an enormous number of people to be killed by your own side. I'm not even remotely making that a small thing. Now, 40 of those 346 were murderers, uh, treason or mutiny, um, which can be seen, of course, in the Paul McGann series, The Monocled Mutineer, which is a nice cross-reference thing. But from the remaining 306, they were for desertion, cowardice, and a few other offensives. Now, not all of these can be attributed to shell shock, and therefore cowardice. But all 306 of these people were pardoned in 2006 by the British government. It's no real triumph in real terms, but on a moral level, it is good that we can finally see that, as a country, we have grown emotionally. Next time I will be talking about the next episode, which is called Meat. Now, the trailer for Meat, which is at the end of Torchwood, this episode looked very much like Hilary Briss. That's where he gets his special stuff from, from the League of Gentlemen. Hmm, that I'm looking forward to. Be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk